Hello, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay, I, hopefully people get that reference. I'm here with my main man, Chris LaRue, uh, and we're going to debate intellectual property. Uh, there was a previous debate, so I don't want to go over the same points that I already made over. Uh, so before uh, we start the debate, I think it's very clear to define our words, because I think that Chris and I don't disagree on what our position is, but on the phraseology, which really uh, is just minutia. I think it's important to define words, not necessarily literally, but w the way people understand them. Because the whole point of communication is to make it where the other side knows what you're talking about. Uh, for example, uh, if I were to say, I feel gay, uh, it would have a very different meaning in the 1950s than it would in the present day. And if I simply mean I'm feeling happy, it doesn't make a lot of sense, and I would argue it is irrational to say I'm feeling gay today, uh, even though gay might have men happy. No, people are going to think something else. And so, if you're if if the whole point of communication is to get your words across to other people, saying I'm gay to mean happy doesn't make a lot of sense. Likewise, uh, if I if people who uh, believe in limited government or uh, are minarchists. Um, would describe themselves as liberal. A liberal in the 1700s means something very different than a liberal today. Uh, a classical liberal and a modern liberal are opposites. And it would not make sense to go around saying, I'm a liberal, uh, because people are not going to assume you mean classically liberal. They're going to assume you mean progressive, big government, welfare state. So the whole point of language is communication. Uh, Chris LaRue seems to be hung up on the phrase intellectual property and says, well, you know, when I hear the phrase intellectual property, um, I hear the phrase ideas that you, that you can own ideas, and what that means to me is that you can sell your ideas and profit off your ideas, and anyone who's against that means that people don't have a right to profit off of their uh, ideas. But uh, what intellectual property means and is understood by its advocate today means copyright and patent law. If you are against copyright and patent law, you're against IP. And if you support copyright and patent law, you're pro IP. And it's as simple as that. If ah. Chris says I'm against patent and copyright law, when he agrees with me and he's against intellectual property. All right, let's, move, law, let's move to the debate here. This I, I'm doing it. Hold on. Don't steal my fire. While well, you're making a speech. I'm getting to the debate. So okay. uh, there's an excellent book. Uh, called Against Intellectual Monopoly that I recommend reading. And the reason it's called Against Intellectual Monopoly is because they say to call it property is a misleading uh, term. Because what intellectual property is, is a form of protectionism where the state prevents competition by saying anyone who makes an idea similar to you... We, we can cover all this in the debate. There's no reason to make this long speech. <laughs> you're you're just simply stating you know a bunch of assertions that I don't necessarily agree with as if they're undisputed, but that's the whole point Fine. of the debate. So during, your during your time, you can say uh, Daniel's wrong because he disputes them. So we're just going to have long speeches at each other. I don't know. You, I don't know what you're going to say. You could say okay. what you want. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Since you're going to make the speech, give me one second so I can get a piece of paper. That was about two seconds, but I'll let it slide. Okay, go All ahead. Right. Um, so that that's really uh, the main point. Um, let me just quote Chris LaRue, because he does not understand uh, what non-rivalrous means, and this is evidence of it. He wrote, um, uh, he said, according, he said, uh, intellectual, uh, people who are against intellectual property rights, now, first of all, we don't actually say this. So already he's clumsy in his language. Uh, he should say, uh, <laughs> okay, you're acting like Kinsella now. <laughs> well, you know, you're just making a long speech. You know, let's have a debate. I'm, tr I'm trying to ex say where the confusion lies first. There well, I could do that too. I mean, but that's not really a debate. I mean, I could just make a long video about what's wrong with uh, the anti-IP commies. But I thought we were going to have a discussion. Fine. So we are. <laughs> we are, if you're not interrupting me. Fine. So here. 
One of the things he says is your asshole and vagina are not rivalrous or scarce. Are not property because lots of people can fuck it and you will still have it. Okay. That's not he, he that's not well, what not finish the quote then. Go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm gonna interpret each line of the quote because it's long. Okay. Oh my god. All physical property is rivalrous. Rivalrous means more than only one person can use that property at the same moment in time. You if broke a woman up. wants broke. if a woman is being raped, you broke up there. Be, stop interrupting, please. Well, you broke up. I didn't hear what you said. I said you non rivalrous <laughs> for something to be non rivalrous, it means more than one person can use the property at the same time without depriving someone else of that use. Like at a private that, like a time. private park? Like a private park. All physical property is rivalrous. There's no such thing as tangible non-rivalrous okay. physical property. Ta wait, wait, wait. wait. Tan there's no such thing as what? Tangible? Or are you saying intangible? Only All tangible property is rivalrous. Okay. It's not okay. non-rivalrous. So you said, right. it said your vagina and asshole are not rivalrous because – and are not property because lots of people could fuck it. I didn't say that. I'm quoting you as I your ideas that. saying I never no, said it's, that. It's an integration of your me, ideas. I make it seem like we support rape. I well, never, look, you told me say, why I said a vagina you, is not scarce. I, I will never, explain ever, it to you right now. That. I'll explain it to you right now. Well, look, I can't, I, it's, it doesn't quote you. It says anti-IP commies. So you I'm making – Anti-IP commies who said that. I'm you, making you're fun. Saying, when you're saying right. this is what they're saying. I let you, you know, spew on for a few minutes. Are, are you just never going to let me respond to anything? I mean, okay, if, you, if you're insistent on just speaking until you're done, go ahead. And I'll Thank wait till I'm allowed to say anything. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm the dictator now. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you're, you're definitely, uh, you so, know, doing something here. So the reason a vagina is rivalrous is because, and to be crude, this – to use an example, if a woman is being raped, she cannot use her vagina the way she wants to use it while she is being raped. To be crude, if a woman wants to finger herself, she can't while she's being raped because a penis is blocking the entranceway. So it's a terrible example. Of course a vagina is scarce. So this is just a, a, a rational straw man that LaRue is saying. He's, and then he's saying, oh, you didn't say it. The anti-IP uh, people said it. Show me a quote from an anti person. No, person. Are you, all right, you get, let me address this since you know you're you're essentially saying I'm being dishonest. I said no particular anti P commies. I said anti P commies. It's clearly a representation of your views, an integration of it, a summation. Uh, so I don't really see you know. I, I never accused you of saying the exact words. Let's go over it. Further, the rest of the quote, which you didn't include, says no voluntary terms of use restrictions can be put on asshole or vagina entry because you don't own that. Okay, so we're talking about terms of use on property, which generally, you guys, uh, you don't make any distinction between involuntary and voluntary terms of use. You generally, or and when I say you, it's very difficult to, to, to say who we're talking about because all of, of you guys, you anti P commies, disagree about what it is you think can't be property. Uh, for instance, you know, Kinsella says Bitcoin can't be property. And most uh, anti P commies that I know say it can. So, so there's obviously some problems with your guys' viewpoints because you, you really you just don't agree. Some of you, you bring up this rivalrous standard, some of you bring up the scarcity standard, some of you bring up the tangibility standard. So these are all different things, uh, and and you all some of you say books can't be property. Some of you say ebooks can't be property. Some of you say they can be property. So it's very difficult to address the anti-IP communism because you really uh, are a, a wide field of different ideas. Indeed, there's a lot of red blacks, obviously, who who completely agree with you. Red blacks are all against IP. So, you know, you, it's hard to distinguish who we're talking about. But, again, this example of the asshole and the vagina is, is perfect. It's not. I just explained why it's not. What you've said with your rivalrous is that basically anything that can't be exclusively controlled is not property. And here we are saying that, you know, like basically we can even reference uh, the whole nonsense of saying copying is not theft. 
because you still have your copy is what you guys claim, right? Well, there we go. They used your asshole or vagina and you still have it. So now you want to divert into whether a particular thing is physical or not. Okay, so that's your that's your only point against that whether, quote is that the asshole it. and vagina are physical, but some other things aren't. I guess Bitcoin. I mean, let's use that as an example. Do you believe Bitcoin is or can be property? Yes, it's physical. It is physical. So, so you disagree anything with you could touch, anything but, you can touch can be property. You can touch Bitcoin. If you can touch it, you, it can be property. Where where can we touch it? Well, people own a uh, uh, bitcoins, right? You mean if they put their code on a fake coin, then you're talking people about that physical coin? That they, yes, people hold bitcoins. You know, people mm -hmm. say, "Look, this is a bitcoin," and they have a coin. And uh, well, that's not really the bitcoin, is it? I I don't really want to spend too much time on this because it's not relevant to what I'm gonna say. But I mean, the, the Bitcoin is something a little bit different than that physical coin, right? Because you can trade Bitcoins without using those physical fake coins, right? Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Let's get more to the point. Are right. zeros and ones embedded in a magnetic medium tangible? Uh, Do they exist? Do these zeros and ones exist? Can you see them? Can you read them? Can you copy them? You can you like view binary? them? You mean like binary code? Any language, I mean, whatever, is information, when they store information on a hard drive, for instance, you understand that they're, they're doing this, I'm not, you know, a computer scientist, but there's, they're, they're in putting in uh, magnetic variations and things uh, that, that, that they physically read. You understand that. Hard drives are physical. The data they store is physical. Right. That's why you have to, it takes space. That's why the NSA has a huge building in Utah to, uh, collect all our non-property according to you, right? You say we don't own our own emails and uh, phones and text messages and things like that. So what's the problem with the government taking them? Well, first of all, email you. itself says you don't own your own email. If you, look, that? if you look at the long contract, Gmail says you don't own your own email and that's why they're allowed to send you advertisements without your consent. And well, you, you've, skipped a to Wait, you've skipped a step though, you, you know, in order to make that contract with Google, Google, which you're saying is a legitimate contract, first your your idea is the words that you might write in an email have to be property, because you're trading you're trading your property with Google. You're giving them permission to use your po property in exchange for certain services. See, so you own you have you control. Mean, they're the ones who created the e the Gmail. Are you saying you? Yeah, own I didn't even know they did. Email? Email's been around a lot longer than Google. Yes, but there are different servers. There's Yahoo. There's Gmail. I'm not saying they created email. They created Gmail. You don't have to use Gmail. I mean, you can Fine. use other email. But the point, and that's exactly the point, see, because you have exclusive control over whether you write an email. Well, let me ask you and this. Whether, and whether you make a contract with Google to ship that email. Let, let so, me ask you, you know, the whole thing is this, you couldn't make that contract with Google if you didn't own your emails, your should words, be, your ideas, your thoughts, etc. Should it be against the law to be a peeping Tom? There's no con not enough context on that to answer well, that. What I what, what I mean is, is Tom, if you what's your body, can someone look at your body without your permission? If you're if you're on private property and you enclosed yeah, you yourself, close your window. You you see someone's window from across your window, and you take you know your little glasses and you peek into their window. Right. Uh, should that be against the law? Well, assuming that you're not trying to trick me with any context, you know that you're going to pull out, then I would say absolutely not. You know, it's uh, listen. It's up to the person with the property to protect their property from non-aggressive view. If they don't want people to see them naked in inside their house or whatever, then they need to cover their fucking window. What, well, let's what's say so you complicated have about that? That can go through the window. Have it then. Yeah. Well, I mean, then we're going back now. That's this starts to get into pretty complex issues, and it's good stuff to talk about. I mean, that goes back to what Rothbard wrote about in in Ethics of Liberty and For New Liberty. I, maybe both or, or either one, I'm not sure, about uh, homesteading, uh, pollution, noise, those kinds of things. So the question you're really asking is, while uh, a normal view inside an empty window is considered homesteaded, is an x-ray machine, for instance, by the government that goes around and sends x-rays of your house to see what's inside, is that, has that been homesteaded? And I mean, the obvious answer is no. Uh, you know, that's an invasion. Uh, there is no expectation that, you know, there was no 
uh, x-rays that penetrated your house before you built the house when you bought the house that you know that stuff wasn't there this is a new thing that hasn't been homesteaded in so obviously you know no that would be an invasion of property and the same thing and, and let's bring up get right to the point the same thing would be true of the ideas in your mind for instance they can see your ideas in your mind with a functional MRI. They can see this neural energy. Whether you're going to call that neural energy ideas or you're going to call can't ideas, see the ideas, they can look at the brain waves and but they can't. They different don't know. ideas express themselves in different forms of neural energy. Different parts of the brain light up. You're mistaken on the science. They can identify certain ideas based on what lights up in the brain and how it lights up in the brain. They can even transmit thoughts to control limbs across space now. They can copy thoughts. They can, they can view images inside the brain that people think. They can even retrieve lost memories now. Uh, much more. They can block neural energy. DARPA has a, a top secret, secret so weapon that no. disable you. you and now, so what your problem with your position is if you say you don't own your ideas and thoughts and stuff like that, then a weapon like that is non-aggressive because you don't own those ideas anyway. And if it's doing no damage to the physical body, which you don't even say you can own exactly, what you're saying you can have a property right in the body, but not a, not no, own no, the body. No, 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 no. Oh, fine. It, it wouldn't do any damage. Listen, it wouldn't do any damage. It wouldn't. We'll, we'll get into it. It didn't. Wouldn't damage this type of device. Wouldn't necessarily damage your body, and it could stop you from thinking, implant thoughts in your mind, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, let's get to the definition of property and and things like that. Fine, but. Fine. So we're going to go over that in a sec. But before I do, I just want to finish sure. this particular point. You you have a face. If I would say, look, I have a Facebook wall uh, of some pictures. I don't think you do. But if let's say you you took you know uh, from my Facebook wall, you know you made a copy of my pictures by looking at my Facebook wall, as you could do with the computers, and you wrote you know Daniel is a faggot, and you distribute those pictures. I don't think I should be able to sue you because. You didn't steal anything from me. Uh, all you did was copy pictures on a, a publicly available uh, site. Fine. And I own. Uh, I own my physical face, but I don't own copies of pictures of my face. If you want to take a picture of me while I'm walking in the street, I don't think you need my consent. Well, there shouldn't be any public property, so you're introducing some other problems into the mix now. No, there but even on a private even property. There should only be private property, and then and then the people who own the private property would make the rules. So if the people that own the property property said nobody can take pictures of our customers on our property, then that's totally legitimate. I agree with and that. If someone did that, it, it, you could call it theft. I would probably call that particular example fraud because they made a contract to do it. But of course, you can't have fraud if there's no property involved. See, I mean, all contracts uh, exchange property of some right. kind or another. Yeah. So there's always a question of what is the property. Now on the pictures, you had no contract not to take the pictures or, or whatever. So yeah, there's no theft. But if uh, say he's in your house, you're having a party and he's asked if you can go to the bathroom. Uh, let's even use a different example. Let's say he asks to use your computer and you say, sure, you can go ahead and use my computer. And then he, he goes in and he, he looks into your folders and he ends up copying a bunch of stuff. You know, you didn't get, tell him he could do that. He's stolen from you. Now, you could argue about whether you should have had to explicitly say, yes, you can use my computer, but only for X, Y, and Z. And I don't have a big problem with that. But the, the bottom line is you own the computer. You own everything in the computer, all the information, everything. And so... It can be stolen. The computer can be stolen, and so can data inside the computer can be stolen. And indeed, if it couldn't be, then the NSA would be doing nothing wrong. I mean, the reason the NSA is a criminal agency is because they're violating our property rights. They're stealing our property. Well, first of all, I, I don't believe there's a right to privacy, but I think the NSA is very different. The reason the NSA is, is, is a problem is numerous problems that I don't think have to, anything to do with anti-IP. One, the government itself <laughs> pretends to respect intellectual property. So if they violate that, they're committing fraud, right? I mean, there is this thing called no. You know, Where's their contract? What according to the fourth? The Fourth Amendment says that's not a contract. That's a, a bullshit. That's just something yeah, some dead people you know, wrote down. 
They take an oath to uphold it. So when they broke break that, they're violating their contract. Yeah, but they don't believe it violates it. I mean, it means whatever they say it means, whatever it wants to mean. It's their no, document. No, don't just mean whatever you say they mean. If a, if you say yeah, I'm for the state, because it doesn't <laughs> matter. I mean, all right, we're off track here. This doesn't really have anything to do with what we're talking about. Bob, and when you gave the NSA why it's illegitimate, that I'm saying it's illegitimate, that has nothing to do with with violations of IP. Uh, fine. So what is it? Now you got upset when you said so you don't have a problem with them recording all your emails and phone texts and stuff. Of course I do. Well, what's wrong with it then? Because, Why is it wrong? Because they can use that to prosecute me. It's the same reason I don't want to want. But what if they don't prosecute you? Is it wrong or not? I don't trust them not to. The, the <laughs> same reason I think it's okay for you to record police, but I don't want police to have body cameras on their heads because the cameras will use be used against me. When, one of the reasons we have the war on drugs. If the lack, of, is trust, trust, lack of trust in somebody, uh, lack of trust in someone is not criminal. Just because you don't trust the NSA doesn't make them criminal. What they're doing is they're criminal, criminal because, because they, they are committed stealing. fraud. They promise to follow the Fourth Amendment and they're breaking it. Who have they defrauded? You don't. You don't have a contract with them. They are illegitimate for more reasons. They're tax funded. It's a coercive monopoly, uh, etc. But on top of that, they're stealing our property. Now let's let's talk about what property is, because you know we got to get to the basic. Sure. You have said that property is the right to exclusive control. So you don't own your body; you have a right. No, 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 to no, your no, body. no. You're being confused. When Kinsella said, confused. when Kinsella said to call. Wait, 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 no, no, no. I don't want to talk about what Kinsella said unless you're making it clear what you agree or disagree. I am. So when Kinsella okay. said. To call an object or thing property is confusing or misleading. What he means, and I agree with this, is that an object itself, that to define property as simply an object, doesn't tell the whole story. That property is not simply the object. The property is who can use the object. So a, a, a house is, a, if you have a property in a house, it's who can use that house. And who can use it is what is the property? It's not simply the house. It's the property of who, why, why you laugh? It's silly. And you were in you, especially after your speech about using words in their normal sense. So what you're saying is you don't own your car. You just have a property right. No, in your car. You, don't. you don't own your body. You just have a property yeah. right in your body, no. but you can't have a right in a car. Never unless you that. own the car. See, you're making these assumptions that are not true. I never I'm said you don't own your house. You own your house. But your house. House. So the object is property then. The object is property. The yes. house is property. Yes. Okay. Well, then but, that's what I said all along. But to call a house property is, is very vague. You have you – have It's not vague. Call. I own the house. That's vague. You're saying I that car – I own that car. You're saying that's vague. I'll tell you what's vague is I have a property right in that car. That's vague. What property right? Who says what the right is? Who assigns the right? Where did this right come from? Why is it a right? What you, well, you, 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 right. you have theories of property rights, homesteading, legitimate title transfer. I mean, those are where rights. No, I'm just asking you a simple question. Why does someone own something? What gives them this right? Where does this right come Either from? Through homesteading, through trade. Ah, see, but homesteading is an action. You see? Right. So if you homestead a, an unknown stick on the ground, you pick it up. You've just said, then that makes it property. Right. It's the fact that it's been homesteaded that no, it gives if, the if right. Using an unhomed stick, that's still an object, but until it's homesteaded, right. it's not property. See why Kinsella says it's confusing or misleading? It's just unowned. Exactly. So it's not property yet. Until it's right. owned, it's not property yet. It's still it's just an object. Okay. So you homestead it. I agree with that, but that has nothing to do with what he said. He said to call a thing or an object property is confusing. Means. That's no, what he means. No, no, no. You just said when someone homestead it, it's property. But you, you said before that's confusing to say that. So you're contradicting yourself. Are you confused or not? I mean, is the stick property once it's been homesteaded yes. or not? But is it property before it is? <laughs> no. But is, what, is it is it an object before it is? Yes. Okay, that's what he means. But that doesn't mean anything. All you're saying is, is that some things are owned and some things aren't. That doesn't mean that some things can't be owned. But that doesn't mean, and car. it certainly doesn't mean that calling an object or thing a property is confusing. I mean, nobody in the world thinks that's confusing. And say, I own, I, I own uh, uh, this chair. Who's confused by that? Who except Kinsella? 
Who is how confused about, how about by all that? People who say property is theft, they're confused by it, right? Well, okay, you might have a point there. The commies, you know, the the, the red blacks, which you side with here, uh, you know, are pretty, but they're le they're more consistent. The red blacks may also that. say two plus two is four. That doesn't mean they're wrong because they're red blacks. Let's get back they're on track. Because of what their political philosophy necessarily is. Everyone well, they oppose property consistently. You oppose property a little less consistently. You're both wrong. Well, let me ask you. Let's this. get back to wait. Let's stay on the topic we're we're trying to to focus on because this is this is what it's all about. So, if if you say that property is this right to exclusive control, which you've now recognized comes about because of the act of homesteady. I never now recognize that. I recognized that <laughs> quite some time ago. Well, isn't homes? Oh, okay, okay. Well, I don't care when you recognize it. Uh, right, so the act of homesteading. The act of production, which incidentally Kinsella also says production does not create property, uh, and the act of um, I can't speak for him, uh, right? Uh, and or the act of exchange. Okay, so all three of those things are an act. As soon as you've homesteaded something, you have you have the pro you have exclusive control. You right. have property. Okay, the reason you have a right to that property to that exclusive control is because you nonviolently nonviolently homesteaded it. You see, so it's the fact that you've nonviolently homesteaded it that gives you the right to control that property. So when you speak about the right to control the property, the only reason that right can exist is because you've non-coercively homesteaded it, produced it, or exchanged it. So to to talk about this right is really irrelevant. It it doesn't narrow uh, the discussion of what can be property or not at all. Okay. Do you believe that copyright the right, the right to property derives from the fact of property. The fact that you have nonviolently homesteaded and produced or exchanged it creates that right. All right. So that is what the right is. It is it is the right to exclusive control. But that right to the exclusive control only exists because the exclusive control exists beforehand. Do you believe that copyrights and or patents are legitimate? We have to define these words. The goal and and you said something in the intro that's really relevant to this. You said that uh, it was recognized at a certain time under common law that these were monopolies. It's not precisely true if you look into the history. When they uh, common law in England uh, banned government issued monopolies, they made a distinction from copyright and trademark and um, uh, patent. Okay, and they didn't treat that the same because they recognized there was a legitimate property interest in people's creations. All right, so so that's clumsy history there, and and Kinsella has been guilty of that among others. All right, but but second, the goal of a patent or a copyright and these types of things can be achieved through non-voluntary means. So whether you're going to call a voluntary crack, uh, contract that restricts reproduction, disclosure, uh, distribution, these types of things, copyright is is really of no consequence to me. The only thing that I don't care which terms you use. But patent, copyright, trademark, these goals of maintaining property rights in the interest of the creator can be done through voluntary means. Well, through in, in our previous debate, you said it was perfectly legitimate to copy movies from Pirate Bay. Yes. But if you believe that prop that you own your ideas, what, you never had consent. You never agreed with the movie theater. Oh, you never asked permission from the movie theater owner to, to, wa to, to watch their movie. So why do you have a right to copy movies from Pirate Bay? Well... Okay, the movie theater doesn't really have anything to do with it. We're talking about Pirate Bay. Now, first of all, Pirate Bay doesn't host any content. You're not downloading anything from Pirate Bay. All they host are links. They're just links to other people's sites. Well, are you allowed to download from, from those links? Yes. And again, just like a garage sale, okay, when you go to a garage sale, there's no obligation on you to find out if any of the items in there have been stolen. Okay. And then again, There'd be no. It'd be very difficult for you to check. Now, some stuff maybe you could check, uh, at least to a certain level of assurance, but uh, you'd never know for sure. A lot of material on Pirate Bay is not copyrighted, or uh, you can put anything you want. I mean, you can put stuff you write up there. You can write a song and you can put it on Pirate Bay. So there's plenty of material that there is no uh, government restrictions on. Fine, but the stuff that is copyrighted is that okay to copy? Uh, yes. Because the the copyright contract, uh, well, there is none. I mean, where is this contract? So, the so movie, there is no contract. And the movie studios say we we think it's theft. 
when you uh, watch our movie without either buying it on DVD well, they or can think whatever they want. movie theater. Well, they can think whatever they want, but, you know, like but I just told you, don't, don't, doesn't you the listen, listen, see, you're arguing, you're saying, you're talking about involuntary terms of use conditions, and I'm telling you, I've told you all along, those are illegitimate. Only so voluntary. We agree. So what? Only what exactly voluntary terms saying? of use conditions are legitimate. Now, voluntary terms of use conditions could achieve all the things that involuntary terms of use could achieve, except the evil. Okay, so you know it can't control other people's minds, which incidentally is only wrong because ideas are property. So, okay. so you contradict your own. You justify what you abhor by saying that ideas aren't property. But see, if you don't own your ideas and you own your own thoughts and your own mind, then involuntary terms of use conditions are perfectly legitimate, but they're not. So what you're confusing is involuntary terms of use agreements and voluntary terms of use agreements. Now, status copyright is involuntary and therefore illegitimate. It's also, ta it's also tax enforced by a course of monopoly. So there's, there's no, no voluntarism anywhere in it. But that so doesn't mean you can't so own a book, by the sell state. a book, let's or say sell what? a book by, by restrictions. You can do it as long as it's voluntary. Go ahead. There's no such thing as a voluntary patent. That is an oxymoron. No, it isn't. You can. Uh, there's many ways to, to protect uh, an invention without having a statist uh, involuntary terms of use thing. Perhaps. For instance, I could, have, I could have the damn thing blow up if you open it. I can have it self-destruct. I can take a performance bond on our co sale contract of $10,000, and if my machine sends a signal to the third-party arbitration named in the contract, uh, I just got your $10,000. So, of course, there's ways to enforce wait, wait, patents wait, wait, wait. voluntarily. You saying, saying, so if someone, if someone copies an idea, the punishment should be death. That's, is yeah. that what you're just saying? That, where did, that where did you, you get that from? Where, they can, where did they can you get blow that up and they can blow up with it, right? The, the, no, they could blow up the machine without blowing up the person, brother. Well, I mean, they could blow a fuse for heck's sake. I mean, or well, whatever. Let's say, let's say it damaged the person. Would the person who would the person be liable to repay those damages? Well, would, that's you know that's something to be put in the contract. <laughs> okay, I really don't see where there's a disagreement because. The, the disagreement is on terminology, not... I agree. I agree. There is, you agree with me. You don't agree with Kinsella. I, <laughs> Kinsella says ideas can't be property. You say ideas can be property. You say ideas can be sold. You say ideas can be sold contractually. You understand that voluntary terms of use uh, restrictions are legitimate and that um, involuntary terms of use restrictions are illegitimate. So really, it's Kinsella you disagree with. No, not. Kinsella does not disagree with that either. Kinsella wrote a book. Is he... and sold his book is he selling or do you really believe Kinsella is saying you're not allowed to write books and sell them well he couldn't even give away his book if it wasn't property you can't give away things you don't own i can't give away the brooklyn bridge because i don't own the brooklyn bridge so he can set whatever price he wants on his property well, you, you, you can't can give away to give his trash away for you free can give away you things you don't own no you can't if i steal you your shirt it. and i give that to my friend i'm giving it to him it's not legitimate and it's wrong but he still has it it's theft Okay. That's not a yeah. gift. It's not a gift. It's theft. But he still has it. Well, it's theft. It's not a gift. I mean, the words mean things you said, right? You know? So it's different. The whole point is that you can steal these things. That's why it's pro it's property. You can own it. You can sell it. People can steal it. You can contract and touch your property. I don't think anyone who is anti-IP is well, saying that you cannot well, yeah. be paid for for expressing your own thoughts. You can give a, you can be paid to give a lecture. A lecture is simply you speaking your ideas. No one is yeah. saying that's illegitimate. No, well, you are, but no, you don't understand the contradiction. Saying copyright and patent is illegitimate, and that is what is euphemistically referred to as ideas, ideas can't be. You call it something else. So so say ideas you can't like be property. Term, you can call it. You can you can sell. It. Listen, it's lo it's simple logic. You say ideas can't be property. So if they weren't property, you couldn't sell them. But someone speaking for a fee is selling ideas. Someone writing for a fee is selling ideas. Words convey ideas, just like neural energy in the brain holds ideas and information on a hard drive holds ideas, okay? Now, what you guys mean to say but are very clumsy about it and, and lacking, you don't have any philosophical knowledge, is that universals cannot be owned because universals don't exist. It's just a concept. Now, the concept of...
What do you mean? I, I will explain. Okay. Right. Universals, the problem of universals is the most famous problem in philosophy in the history of mankind. Okay. So it's bad that you guys don't know about this. All right. It, it shows that you kind of don't know what you're talking about. All right. But universals essentially are like a platonic form. You've probably heard now, what you guys mean. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so, so platonic form is this idea. Plato came up with this idea that everything that exists has a sort of prototype out there in this, what he called an ether, okay, that is supposedly, he thought it kind of ex actually existed. And so, for instance, if you thought of an idea, maybe a new solar panel, okay, he would say, you only took that idea out of the ether. You only copied it from this ether, okay? And those are universals. And your idea of the solar panel is only an instance of that platonic form, okay? But those platonic forms obviously don't exist, okay? They're just ideas in his own mind. Plato's had that idea. Now, he owned his idea of that nonsense. He owned that nonsense. He had exclusive control over what he thought about universals. But universals themselves, for instance, book, book per se, the, the prototype book from which all books might be drawn from, there is no such thing. And therefore, that cannot be owned, okay? That, that so-called prototype. I can own my idea of it, but the, the actual thing isn't, it doesn't exist. So that's the confusion that you've smuggled into economics. It's actually metaphysics, see? It's a question of what exists, not what can be owned. In economics, we deal with this is what exists, and it can be owned. Of course, all these things you say aren't property are. And if, uh, if just by, if, for instance, if you say you have a property right in a car, but you don't own the car, well, I mean, it, you could say that about everything. How about a machine that makes cars? Okay, is that well, capital? Say, is that a I, capital when good? Is, when did I say you don't own the car? Well, I quoted you on it. The other day, and then you said, "Well, no, you didn't mean it. That was just no, no, no. what I what I, what I meant was that, like what I said earlier, a, a car is an object, but an object is not a synonym for property. So to simply use an object as a synonym for property is confusing because a property is not simply the object. Just like an homesteaded stick is an object, but until it's homesteaded, it's it's not property. So it's not simply a synonym." That's what he means. Well, I never said, I don't think anyone has said that an object is a synonym for property, but property are things that are owned. Okay. So, you know, right. that's a different thing. You understand. Fine. Okay. Fine. So a car is property. <laughs> uh, car is property. Amen. But, but so your ideas and your thoughts and your feelings and your behaviors. And incidentally, can tell us, uh, I can quote you for him. He says, ideas are not property. But no, you do have I, exclusive control over your ideas, right? Do you have exclusive control over what you think, Daniel? I don't even I don't even think that's necessarily true. What? What is it I, true? Uh well, you know, if you want to get into a philosophical quote, this look, I don't like mushrooms. Can I control the fact that I don't like mushrooms? Yeah. Really? Sure. You are in control. That's exactly why you don't like them, is because you don't like them, not someone else. No, but I can't control the fact that I don't like them. Maybe I would love to like them, but every time I eat them, they make me throw up. <laughs> so, so can you control still like control that? that. You're huh? still like controlling that. Sure. I mean, there's things you might be able to do. You'd have to try. Maybe you could find some medicines. You could cover it up in other things. I mean, you have control. Well, let me ask you this. You're, you're, you're talking about metaphysical things that are, might be outside your control. You're, so whether it's hot or cold. But you're that doesn't mean your ideas aren't under control. You're your anarchist. ideas are under control. You're an anarchist, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Could you believe with as much conviction as you believe anarchy that the state is legitimate? Well, I mean, I don't because I have control over my thoughts. But you, you couldn't, know? even if you wanted to. Even if you wanted to, you couldn't because you know it's nonsense. Well, I did at but one time. But you can't anymore. Right? And the reason I don't anymore is because I do have control over my thoughts but and I studied and I learned and I, and I witnessed the Patriot Act and all these ridiculous <laughs> things. And so the fact that you take in new information and constantly think doesn't mean you don't control your ideas. I mean, that if you, listen, if you, if your ideas 
could be changed regardless of, of you know, your, your structure of thought, your beliefs, your philosophy, your ideology, then they, they wouldn't be ideas and you wouldn't own them. You wouldn't have any control over them. So it's exact. I mean, this is a very subtle point, but, and I don't see the point in going into it too much further. I think we're going to go back and forth. I'm going to say you do have control over what you think. I mean, first of all, you could kill yourself and then you're not going to think anymore. <laughs> you, you have control over your. That's, that's true. You could that's have a lobotomy. Good point. You know, you my point is that, ways. that what you think and what you believe, you can't necessarily control it. I'm an anarchist, but I don't think I can control the fact that I'm an anarchist. I'm an anarchist because I can't even imagine, because if I thought that the government was legitimate, I would not believe it because it's irrational to me. But I can't prove. Just like it's irrational for some people to believe that anarchy is legitimate. So, you're, 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 this is an, an incredible confusion. What you're saying is, because I believe what I believe, I can't, I can't uh, own my beliefs. That's not what I'm saying. Because that's I believe crazy. a certain thing, that's uh, not what I'm, I'm not in control of what you I believe. Know, you said you, said you can control your crazy. beliefs. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you said you can control your beliefs, but I'm saying you don't even think that's true. Obviously, I could stop being an anarchist if I wanted to. All it would take would be certain information that would come in that would show that my beliefs are contradictory. So for a week, don't whether be that information for exists week, or not. For one week, don't be an For one week, don't be an anarchist and actually believe it with conviction. You couldn't do it. Yeah, I could. If, if the information warranted a change of opinion, then I would change my opinion. You see, because I control my thoughts, I can change my opinions. Right now, there's no reason to. The truth shows that the state is criminal. Because private property is the law, and the state is in violation. But let's get back to exclusive control, okay. right? Are you still maintaining that ownership is the right to exclusive control, but not the exclusive control itself? Or is that just Kinsella? Or do you not see the difference? I don't, I don't know. I guess I don't see the difference. Okay. But I, if you say you don't own that car, but you have a right to the car. No, that's where, not what we're well, I'm just using an example. I mean, but you know, you that's the, the difference. You own the car, but owning the car means you have a right to control that car. That's, that's exactly what I said all along. So now you, you have adopted my position, and, and I really don't think Kinsella is going to agree with you because that's exactly why he started screaming at me this bullshit about how you don't own things and an object or thing can't be property uh, and, you know, talking about how wonderful he is and awesome and everything. You know, so I don't think you agree with Kinsella. Okay, that's the well, main that's problem. My goal, my goal is not to agree with Kinsella. My goal is to have as consistent a belief system and coherent and non-contradictory as possible. Okay. Right? You you say that Kinsella is, you know, my god or cult leader or whatever. Leader. Because I think to just to disparage anyone who disagrees with you, so you call it a cult. It's like when people say anyone who agrees with Ayn Rand uh, must be part of a cult. You know, well, I would say the, that the Randians are a cult. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, every time Ayn Rand quotes something, it's always from one of her old books. She never actually ends up quoting anyone but herself. Yes. It's, she, it's quite she, ignorant. She, but, well, uh, yes, she didn't give credit where credit was due as much as she should have. That's clearly true, especially in regards to Garrett Garrett and Herbert Spencer, a couple of I mean, others. Rothbard quoted everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. and no, we're know, off. We're off. Yeah, uh, we're off. But, 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 but again... <laughs> The, the 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 question is, uh, if someone uses your physical property without consent, that would be a violation. But yet, oh, yeah. your idea is someone can use without your consent. They no, can. They can. How are they going to get them? Uh -huh. If I don't consent, what do you I mean? have lots of ideas that I haven't shared. How are they going to get the those ideas if I don't consent? Produces a movie. Someone movie. else copies that movie. And gives it to someone else. The movie studio didn't give the consent of that person to copy that movie. And yet you said websites that do that are perfectly legitimate. So why are you treating ideas differently than if I'm someone not. else distributed? I've already pointed out to you that it's exactly the ideas are just like a car. They can be exclusively controlled. You can give them away for free. You can give them away with conditions. You can sell them. And you can sell them with conditions. The only thing is it has to be voluntary. Look. I own all my thoughts. It doesn't even matter if someone else has copied them. I still own them. If I give you a copy of an idea, I still own the original idea. You guys are right in that sense, but you're wrong in that just because uh, there, uh, 
just because you still have it doesn't mean it isn't theft. So if I have a voluntary contract with you not to disclose, reproduce, redistribute something I give you, and you violate, uh, violate that contract, then you, you've committed but, but, theft. But only something means you can use it without your permission. If you tell, if you tell that's not true. That's absolutely false. You own a private park, but you you can let well with your permission. Absolutely right. So absolutely if I right. if I if you tell a joke and without your express permission, tell other people that joke. Haven't I stolen your joke? No, there was no contract. Well, why does it have to be a contract? I can because I, I, I can give a joke away or I can sell it. That's what if I go into means. your house and I take your table salt. Do I need express permission not to take it? No, I need express permission to take it. I can't just assume now you're, you give it away for free. Now you put it in the context of a trespass. So if you trespass and you steal uh, my recipe out of my safe or my drawer and whatever anywhere, then you've stolen. See, So, so it only according to you, the only ways ideas can be stolen is if they're in a physical private thing which you own. All ideas are physical. They're all physical. They are tangible. They can be viewed. They can be seen. They can be copied. They can. But they're be not solely physical. They're not solely physical. A yeah. joke is not solely physical. If I tell you a joke, you can't touch what the words that are coming out of my mouth. Well, it does make tangible sound waves, and they those can be recorded. They can be felt. They can be whatever. So it's as tangible as can it can be. Can you touch a joke that I tell sure, you? Sure, you put it up loud enough, and, and you put your hand up to the speaker, and you'll feel it. Put your hand up to your mouth, and you'll feel it coming out. This, I mean, you're enunciating uh, sound waves. You're making sound waves to convey ideas. Look, if you give the joke away without a contract restricting it, then you're correct. Then it's not theft. But if you were to make a contract that said, I'm going to tell you, listen, Dan, here's a contract. For 500 bucks, I'm going to tell you this awesome joke, but you can't ever tell anybody again without my permission. Then you say, well, okay. Boom, you just stole. Of course, I'm going to take yeah, the $500. I don't, I don't I'm going to take the $500. So I don't disagree with that. But – you can't make contracts about non-property. The fact that you say you can contractually exchange it means it's property. Why Why are you treating ideas differently than you're treating every other property? I'm not. I keep telling you this. But you are. You're There's saying no I can tell a joke no you difference. say without your express permission. You can give a car away, too. You can give a car away. You can give a house away. You can give an idea away. There's no, no difference. No, 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 no. You just said the reason I can tell When you get no this, you're going to feel funny. You're going to feel so look. What you just said, if you say a joke, sit, I can tell someone else a joke you said because it's not theft. Why? Because I didn't give you express permission that you couldn't do it. Well, does that mean I can – if you invite me to your house and, and I say pass the salt and let, once I pass the salt, I take the salt, put it in my pocket, is that okay? Because you didn't give me express permission not to steal the salt. You just assumed I probably wouldn't take it. Does that mean it's okay now? Hmm. That's an interesting. Uh, let me. I'm not sure where you're going with that. Uh, it seems like a bad example for your point. It's have not, to give no, me a minute or two to think about you're that. You're treating you're treating ideas differently. Listen, you are because I, I, I can't quite. I, I have to think about that example of yours. But let's stick to the principles, okay? An idea can be given away. A joke can be given away. So can a car. So can a house. Okay, right. I can say, here, take this salt. I can say you can keep it, or I can say you've got to give it back. Different that's point. totally up to me but that's a because different the point. salt is property. Therefore, I have the choice whether to give it away or sell it, give it away permanently, or say they have to give it back, it, whatever. Now, it, with, in the case of your joke, if I tell you the joke without making a contract first, then it's yours. If it's I not hear joke, Just like if I give you the handy the salt on a street. If, and don't say anything about it and walk away. Well, I gave you the salt. I mean, well, if, there's no difference. If you say a joke and I write the joke you said on a piece of paper and I sell that piece of paper for five bucks and you say I can't do that, the piece of paper is mine and the pen I wrote it is mine. So by respecting, there's, there's a conflict. Either you say you own the joke and you can't use your own piece of paper and your own pen to write someone else's words because my words trump your piece of paper and your pen, you're writing them, or my piece of paper and my pen trump my words and therefore you can sell it. So which is it? What a what a mess that was. I, I you know, I don't know how you can think with that kind of chaos going on. I really I'm very I mean, smart. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, that's not smart. I mean, that's just bizarre. I mean, you're making some some bizarre things up. I mean, I, it's hard to even find. It hurts. It hurts to try to think like you. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> I feel fine, but <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. If I make a voluntary contract with you to tell you a joke, and you know the, the condition is you can't do, tell it to someone else, then uh, do you think you can violate that, and you haven't committed fraud or what? Depends if I agree or not. Obviously, that's the whole point. I my whole point is that what's wrong with what you call IP is involuntary terms of use conditions. Okay? But that's what IP but is. Voluntary? No, it isn't, and I'll show you why. But but voluntary terms of use conditions are legitimate. Now, you want to define IP as involuntary terms of use. No, conditions. I want to define IP the way it's defined IP, and the way advocate. advocates define Who's IP. Who's an advocate? And patent. Is Zella an advocate? Who's an advocate? I'm You're going to let the state define it. Alexander Spooner. Uh, Spooner, uh, I don't think you know where he stands on the issue because I said, I read, I, he said I, intellectual I, property needs needs no more protection than any other kind of property. He considered it perfectly valid. He was just simply saying that you can't have involuntary terms of use contracts. Yeah, he was totally no, of my position. You believe it. He, he supported patents. Lysander Spooner supported he, patents. He may have at one time, but he was, he was an he didn't support any status stuff. At, you know. At, he supported patents. I have his collected works. Here, let's see if I can find. Well, it. I've read his collected works, but but you're not oh, you're not understanding that people's opinions opinions can change over time. A Lysander Spinner become, became more radical. Reneged on that. I don't think he ever said I am against patents. Patents. Are oh, no. But he, his point was is that patents don't need any special protections than any other kind of property. I mean, I could pull up the quote for you if you'd like to see. I, it. But, but they. But. but you okay. read the law of intellectual property? You read the law of intellectual yeah, property? Yeah, I have it. Here, let me oh, well, not have it. Have you read it? You don't have to go yes, get it. Yes, I've read I've it. read it. I can quote I've from it right everything now. everything he's written but the unconstitutionality of slavery, which I Okay. Mean. So he says in there that he defends that you can own ideas and the importance of that and everything. He just says that it needs no protections that any other property doesn't need. He's saying exactly the same thing as me. So you're he certainly He certainly didn't... Uh, support a statist patent system he did uh, he applied for patents i'm telling you he, he became more radical over time all right he was an attorney at one time and then he said no i can't be an attorney anymore because i'm against licensing of words so he stopped being an attorney i mean you know his position changed over time so you're against copyright and patents i'm for voluntary terms of use agreements being valid they the, people so can make them People can enforce them. They're legitimate violations, the person, fraud, and theft. The person who invented the telephone said, if anyone makes a telephone, I can sue them. Do Did he have a contract with everyone? No. But and it's in voluntary terms of use. It's, it's forbidden. It's uh, criminal. No, we agree. But listen, listen, in a private law society, he could go to uh, the arbitration security insurance companies and make a contract with them to respect uh, his his so called whatever you want to call it copyright or patent or you know whatever yeah, and if anyone anyone who voluntary anyone who voluntary contracts with those insurance companies you know would it be agreeing and then so you could theoretically have it binding on the entire society. I find it funny how you call me a commie when we both agree. We both agree. I call Kinsella a commie. I say you're not a Kinsellian. You're just a little <laughs> bit confused still. You're actually in agreement with me. Can, you you say ideas can be owned. Kinsella says they can't. You say the issue. You are agreeing that the issue is whether the terms of use are voluntary or involuntary. He re, he absolutely rejects that position. Everything you agree with me about, he absolutely rejects. That's true. Right. I've seen the debate. Well, I mean, I can quote him. I'll quote him right here for you. He says ideas are here. I mean, I've got I've got. Unfortunately, I'm in a different browser because this Google thing. Uh, wouldn't work in uh, Mozilla, but uh, I've got all his quotes on on right click. But so I can't see you right now. I'm going to pull him up. I'm going to start quoting him for you. Oh. Which one should we go with? Should I just say them and we can talk about them? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> all right. We talked about to call an object or thing property is confusing. 
Um, so, and we talked about here where he says, but as I noticed in the Q&A to my talk, I am not persuaded that Bitcoins are ownable resources, things subject to property rights. You disagree with him there. Uh, I mean, we just go down the list. You don't agree with anything he says. Um, he says here, I think filing a federal trademark registration might be a good idea in some cases. Why don't we talk about that? He, means, think, defensively. he means defensively. Okay, so you believe it's okay to initiate aggression if, if you it's somebody not, might might commit a crime against you in the future? He's not initiating aggression. He's filing a federal trademark. That binds everyone in the whole world to his involuntary terms of use agreements. What he's what he means, I imagine what he means is if you create something and someone else later creates it and patents it, they can sue you for infringement. So before you, they do so, you patent it. But you're not, you're not allowed to sue anyone for infringement. You simply buy the patent That's to prevent yourself from being sued. You're Once you actually sue anyone for infringement, then you're committing aggression. No. You just buy the patent you're wrong. to prevent yourself from being sued. I think sue it. Well, that's wrong, though. I mean, the, the, the aggression's initiated by the declaration by the government saying you can't do this. Doesn't matter if it's enforced or not. They're commanding you. What do you mean? If it's not enforced, then there's no aggression. If I say I'm going to shoot you, but I'm never ever going to shoot you. So if someone I'm obeys the law, you, if, if someone obeys the government's rules, that's not aggression. If I pay my taxes, that's I haven't been aggressed against. But, no, you know. but if, if the government says to you, we have we want on the books that you have to pay taxes, but if you don't pay taxes, we're never actually going to enforce that law and throw you into jail. Is there aggression? Probably not, but that's okay. not what the state says with federal trademarks. They damn well say they better be enforced, and they but keep a registry, and you're supposed people, to check it. they're only and enforced then, if the people who trademark... You're wrong on the facts anyway. I'm pretty sure. I'm not an expert on this insane, crazy status system, but I believe if you wanted to go file a trademark, they would first make sure that it isn't already filed. So the fact that he files it is going to prevent other people from filing it. Yes, but it's also... it's Look... You've heard and of if they uh, can't file it, they're not going to use it. You've heard because of these, if they did, they would be violating the state's rules, and then they could be caged in one of the rape cages anytime the state wants. You've heard of these these uh, trolls that basically buy patents that they never use to be able to sue people. Of so course. What, so what he's saying is, in order to prevent that, get look to prevent that you you get yourself a patent to prevent yourself from being sued, so someone else gets the patent. Right? It's sort of like that's preemptive aggression. It's the same exact I'm thing as saying it's not aggression because I'm not I'm, I'm not suing any. Or who's you're that? saying that you're gonna. Bye. <laughs> Hi, mom. It's not it's not my mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look, you're saying that nobody else can use your trademark. I don't. You know, you're saying that's not aggression. It contradicts your your whole system. I mean, the whole point is of your point of your uh, ideology is that that should be wrong. I mean. You're basically legitimizing the status IP system there. You're saying it's okay to use it for this, but not that, and this if you're in the mood for it. I mean, basically you're saying just are you, in case. Are you if someone, listen, listen, this is what you're saying. If someone might file a trade, use a trademark against me someday, it's okay for me to go ahead and use it against them at first. That, that's like saying you can shoot someone because they might shoot you in the Are future. you committing aggression if you go Crazy. to a library? Uh, I mean, the library is obviously a form of aggression. I yes, mean, but, but the people, the people who, the people, the, the, but the aggression is not the people who enter it. It's the people who steal from others in order to build it. Simply entering the library is not aggression, right? I've thought about that before. And Come on. If, I, if you enter look, a library, who, who are you aggressing against? I'm not, I, I don't have a strong position on it yet. I'm still thinking well, it over. it should be obvious. No, one. I don't think it's obvious. I think all of these things are very complicated. Do you drive basically on the roads? state? Basically, do you drive the, on government roads. Basically, the state is the negation of free will. Okay. Do you drive on so when you're denied free will, everything becomes very complicated because do you, you don't have a do you choice. Drive on government right? roads. I do. Are you using aggression by driving on those roads? Well, um, you know, I would say that it's a little bit different than the library because you're not coercive i mean there's you don't have to go in a library but you're not gonna you can't survive if you don't travel travel is basic to life i mean so you know you, you've got to be able to move around in order to work or eat everything else so you know i don't think it's the, a, a similar i don't think it's a valid analogy 
So would you be able to steal from someone if, if you can if you can uh, if if the only way you can get food is to survive? What? Would I steal for food? Is that what you're asking me? Is it okay to steal for food if the only way you can get food is to to, to steal it? No. So survival is not a justification for theft. So who cares? What are you talking about? The status roads are built on theft. The whole thing's coercive and yes. tax funded, yes. monopolized. The they suppress. Is the one committing the aggression. Well, it's not a totally, the people who use them. It's not a totally the different thing. Them. Fiat currency is aggression. Legal parallels and are aggression. Simply using the currency is not. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm not going to necessarily agree or disagree with this line you're trying to draw right now because I, I it's something that I want to think about some more. I may agree with you. I may not. I'm just not prepared to, to, you know, I have a lot of opinions about things. That one I haven't formed exactly on, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think your analogy of the library and the roads is valid because there's no, um, you know, there can be private libraries, but there can't, can't really be private roads. The state. That's true. You know, I live in a private community. Yeah, there's a very, I know I have a buddy of mine owns a private road. I, I'm speaking generally, generally the state monopolizes road construction through eminent domain and, and taxation. Libraries. They also monopolize the libraries. Know, but you, but private libraries and, I mean, private bookstores are everywhere. So, you know, if you want to move around in St. Petersburg, where I live, um, there's not really any options, alternatives to using the state roads. It's pretty much die because of their aggression right. or use their state roads. Uh, indeed, in this particular situation, I, I would say that you're not only justified in using the roads, but you would be justified in destroying the roads, littering the roads, anything you want, stealing them, I, if you I agree. steal the roads I agree. and, and put them somewhere no, else. I agree. Look, if you want to, if you want to take a bath and, and smash the windows of a police car, it's not smart, and I'm not advocating it in case the state is watching this. I don't think you're doing anything wrong because mm. thieves have no property rights in what they've right. stolen. Exactly. So, so it's not theft. To steal so them. I might. I'm. I, it's not theft. I might, to steal a thief. I might lean. I robs a bank and you take his bank money. You have not stolen from him. I'm trying to go back to what you said about the library. Right now, I would say I'm leaning towards agreeing with you that it's not aggression to enter the library, but it's something not, that I would want to think about some more. Before I, you know, I made a final. Just that's what I do. I think about things a lot before I form an opinion on them. You know, so I didn't just come up with the, what I'm saying here as truth uh, yesterday. I mean, I've been studying for a long time and putting a lot of things together. And so let's get back to what IP is because I think we've pretty you know, much it's, formed. It's, why, why on, it, it's funny. <laughs> uh, you wrote uh, something once on 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 my fishbowl, and you wrote a minarchy is totalitarianism. Sure. And someone responded, one is infinity. Pointing out you're very clumsy with your wording. One is and infinity are is is not the same. The word minarchy means something different than totalitarianism. Now it's yeah, it's, new, it's, it's, it's it's fallacious. It's there is no limit except metaphysical. And that's I, not the li that's not the limits that the term is referred to. The term is referring to the idea that the government will limit itself. And that's absurd on its face. I agree. Government can do whatever the fuck it wants. Therefore, it's totalitarian, whether you call it minarchist or not. Yes. I don't disagree with that. My uh, words aren't sloppy. That has nothing to do with one being infinity. One being the same as infinity is a complete falsehood. My point is utterly true. All right? There is no government that's ever been limited except right. by hey, – they're limited by what they feel like doing. I mean, what you know, that's it. That's not really a limit. I mean, I, you could call it a limit. It's not the limit that the that the term is referring to. Right. I mean, that's true. I mean. Okay then. Right. The the, the phrase "limited government" is 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 an oxymoron. Absolutely. Uh, right. Just yes. like the phrase "voluntary patents." Um, right. So it's not the same same as saying one is the same as infinity. You should retract that. No, but I think. But if you simply say. I mean, one of the problems that I think a lot of libertarians have is ignoring. I'm not a libertarian. An I, I consider libertarian status. I mean, that's the whole point. The whole point of saying you're libertarian instead of anarchist is that you believe in a state. No, the reason I call myself a libertarian over an anarchist is for PR purposes. It sounds it has sounds better, and you want to market, I think, yourself. Mm. Um, but I, I think Murray Rothbard referred to himself as a libertarian. Yeah. 
so I, I don't I don't think I, ha that I have less problem with him doing it because I mean lots we, we've just have the you know we have the evidence that it's deteriorated it's degraded into a status nonsense now I mean you look at the libertarian party you look at most libertarians are status they yes. most I mean they're most of them are minarchists but some are different types of right. status but I think ignoring I mean the problem with calling for instance I don't to call it say Ron Paul a status and to call Obama a status or Lindsey Graham a status and not to make a distinction between the amount of statism that they have is a bit crazy no but you know, Ron Paul believes in liberty way more than Lindsey Graham or Barack Obama does mm -hmm. well, I, I don't want to get into what Ron Paul is I like Ron Paul Okay. Um, I probably would say he's a statist, uh, but I think he's very close to being an anarchist. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I don't just don't see the importance of that discussion really. Fine. Anyway, so I, I think we agree on the debate. Thank you for agreeing with me. I know you're going to you agreeing with for me. But wait, 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 wait. I don't really care if I agree with you. I mean, agreeing with you is fine. It's Kinsella I don't agree with and the anti-P commies. People who say ideas can't be owned and sold, uh, that, that's what my problem with. Now, I want to get back. I've been trying to get back to this for a few times. Of You say you've defined IP. You want to define IP as involuntary terms of use contracts. Right. But that's obviously uh, incompatible with the status quo because in the present system, uh, which they call IP, the present so-called IP system, uh, voluntary contracts are dealt with just as, just the same as involuntary. So you have to distinguish. You have to look at the context of every case. Uh, if, if, if it's been a voluntary exchange, then it would be legitimate. Now, that's not to say I'm not for throwing out the whole system. Of course I am. I'm, I'm for throwing out the entire statist IP system right off the bat because – Property is property. You don't need a special system for one type of property, okay? And second of all, because I throw the whole damn state out, every last shred of it, and let's get on with building a free society. So when I say that, you know, that, that definition doesn't work in the present system, I wouldn't care if you abstain yourself from the present system entirely. But now if you're going to get involved in the present system like Kinsella, and then you're going to apply this false standard – you're going to make mistakes. You're going to violate property rights for people in that system where they might not otherwise be violated. In other words, he would oppose the enforcement of voluntary contracts in that system. What, what that kind is of evil. All of them. He doesn't believe you can have terms of use contracts for things he doesn't believe can be property. That's true. And it's right. True. It's right. It is true. It's, it's, wait a minute. He wrote know, books and he believes he's going to sell books. Says, I've quoted him saying you can't own Bitcoin because he says so. Okay? So that proves I'm right. He will not allow terms of use contracts. He would not consider them valid. If he was uh, in a private arbitration, if he was the decider, which is what he wants to be, he, he would invalidate any contract with terms of use for Bitcoin because you can't have terms of use contracts for something that's not property. Although he may not realize it. He's so ignorant that he doesn't even understand his own contradictions. Indeed, just the other day, he, he unblocked me for a moment or two and embarrassed himself ridiculously. You know, I was, I was talking to him and I asked him, you know, because he was saying ideas aren't property and all these things like that. And I said, well, so are you a pure materialist? And he says... No, you idiot. I'm an epistemological dualist. He doesn't even know the difference between metaphysics and epistemology. Right there. I mean, he doesn't understand. He doesn't even know what material is. Now, an a fairly smart guy would at least look the word up before they embarrass themselves like that. Not only did he embarrass himself like that, but then he was even arrogant about it. He said, I don't expect you would understand epistemological dualism. Well, yeah, I understand epistemological dualism just fine. He thinks empiricism is valid for some sciences, and uh, rationalism or, or you know, is, is valid for other sciences. And it's right, total I nonsense. It's total nonsense. There's, there, you know, empiricism is bunk. You can learn things via the empirical method. It's basically trial and error. But that uh, there's uh, there's no well, dualism you think, you there. Think you can understand physics purely. Theology? What I'm telling you is, is no. that knowledge, epistemology, is gained through an integration of experience and logical. So both the empiricists and the rationals are both wrong. Okay, 
they're right. They're each right in the way they criticize each other. They're both wrong on all the other stuff. So anyway, I re the point is I reject epistemological dualism. I know what it is. I just reject. I reject empiricism as being correct for anything. Now, that doesn't mean it's useless. Uh, it does have value. But uh, you would learn a lot more in the sciences if you don't try to say logic is irrelevant and all these other things. Because, of course, empiricism, the whole, the whole idea of it is, is you really never know, right? You, you do one study. You observe certain things. It doesn't mean that's the way it always will be. If you change one variable, it might be different next time. So it's, it's all, you never learn anything for sure. It's just uh, test, 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 test. So there's never any sure knowledge. That's wrong. So, you know, I, this has nothing to do with anything, but it just proves I understand epistemological dualism just fine. Uh, and uh, that he doesn't know the difference between metaphysics and epistemology uh, or even seem to really care. I mean, he's just an ignorant loudmouth. And again, you know, if I have a contract with you to sell a joke uh, with a performance bond and a private contract and we name third party arbitration, maybe Tal or someone else, um, and you violate it, you know, that case could conceivably be brought to, into the status court. Not by me, of course. I'm not going to do that. But that type of contract could come up into the system. And if Kinsel is up there like a jackass saying, oh, ideas are property, you don't own that joke then he's obviously not going to enforce the voluntary contract, is he? Well, you shouldn't have a... Well, if you agree to something, I think that you... Uh, you shouldn't have agreed to it. So I, I think there, there's a, that's an issue of fraud more than... Um, we can't defraud someone of non-property. Fraud involves the, the theft by deception. Okay, yeah. so the whole point is that I offer you a piece of food for five bucks... You know, you hand me the five bucks and I don't hand you the food. What's what's happened? Well, it's fraud. What's been defrauded? You I'm of not. the food. You've been defrauded of the food or your money, whichever one you want to do. See, there is no fraud unless there's property. I've been defrauded of what I've given up, not what I have not received. Either way. You have, you have stolen $5. I, you have not stolen the food. The food's yours. Whatever you want to – however it you want to look at that. It makes fine. a difference, but – Okay, if you say so, I, I'm fine with either way on that. You didn't give what you promised in the contract or you took. Yeah, it's just a different perspective. It's the same thing. So that would be semantics, yeah. which I don't care about. See, I don't care about your semantics as long as you don't commit aggression. But the problem is Kinsella is an aggressor. Uh, now, I, I'll tell you, you say certain things about anti – I wouldn't say that I would respect Devontae, blah, 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 but lots of other anti-IP commies won't. I know one anti-IP commie wrote a whole article about how people should go out and make voluntary terms of use contracts and then violate them in order to, quote, free the ideas, free the property <laughs> to everyone. Okay, and, and some anti-IP commies say books can't be property. Um, some say ebooks can't be property. Um, so you're all over the map. You are probably the most rational anti-IP commie I've ever come across. Thank you very much. Now I can't change my position. Basically, <laughs> you're not – because you're not an anti – I mean, right off the bat, you say ideas are property. So you're really uh, – you're not with Kinsella. I mean, he would disagree with almost everything you say. Okay. Uh, well <laughs> – I think a good place to end is you saying I'm the most rational of the advocates. So. The only reason I say that is because I think there's hope for you abandoning this nonsense. Look, all you have to do to become sane is say, admit that the that involuntary terms of use conditions are criminal because I, I, wait, that's how because, I that was my intro. Let me finish because it violates self ownership, it, your ownership of your thoughts, and that voluntary terms of use agreements are legitimate for exactly the same reason, because you own your thoughts. And then you've broken through the Kinsellian nonsense. There is no special stuff that can't be property. There's just involuntary terms of use and voluntary terms of use. It's simple. I mean, so you're, you know, you haven't really uh, contradicted anything. You've agreed with everything I said and then said, I agree with you. No, you've agreed with everything. I've said. fine, whatever. I, Hold on uh, now. You said ideas are property. I said that first. I wrote a whole paper on it. I've been it depends what you years. mean. Ideas, 
ideas are property in the sense that you can get paid for expressing ideas you've come up with. You're dropping the definition. Property again. in the sense that you can forbid other people from uh, using your ideas uh, without explicit. Uh, but we already agreed you can through a voluntary contract. You're contradicting yourself. Okay, but if there's no voluntary contract, then uh, that's the same as if I sold a car. No, it's not. No it's not. Yeah, to sell a car, you got to have a voluntary contract, and I could put conditions on the car. I could put terms of use conditions. But I don't need your express permission. I say you can't copy the car. car. I See, don't need express permission. I, if someone else, yeah, you do. I can deny it in the in the original sale contract. So you need it. If, someone if I don't copy, specify it, then you don't if need someone it. Someone made a copy of your car. Uh, should I be forbidden from using that copy? Are you asking me if third parties that didn't agree or can be bound? No, then no. But uh, it's possible to control the property without doing that, obviously. As I explained to you in a private law society, every single person could theoretically be contracted with the security companies to respect uh, voluntary terms of use deals. So there you go. Okay, but that seems very unrealistic. Um, uh, it may be or it may not, you know. Uh, it depends on the norms of the society, the private law society. If the private law society, if, if the public opinion is generally that these things are, are right, that voluntary terms of use are legitimate and that violating them is criminal, then that's the way it'll be. Uh, and people who don't want to agree are not, I mean, you're not going to let them on your property just like you wouldn't let a rapist or, a thug, you know, any kind of other thug. So if, if someone, for instance, I'm given a concert at my club in a private law society and I have a terms of use agreement upon entry, maybe I don't need it upon entry because I've already got it with the arbitration security companies. But um, somebody didn't make that deal, and, I'm, and I'd, I may not let them on my property. That's it. They're right. exiled. So you see, you, you are agreeing that voluntary terms of use conditions are legitimate and can be applied to what you used to call intellectual property, but now you seem to also uh, agree that there is no such thing. There's no category you can you can describe that indeed all property is intellectual in origin. It all starts with an idea to homestead something for a particular usage. You, you don't have an idea for that, then you're not going to make it property, and that's why animals don't, don't have tools generally. I mean, they some do. Uh, and you might start to even argue that that proves some self-ownership. That would be a tough argument because it's very limited, but it would certainly in the direction. I do a thick cut. I think, therefore, I am. Anyway, uh, I have to go, but a uh, good debate. Well, not really because I think we agree. Uh, you agree with me. but uh, <laughs> I don't agree with you that uh, certain types of property can't be owned and sold. You agreed with me that ideas can't. So you haven't named anything that can't. You've, you've come up with some various definitions that you think allows for you to draw some line and say, no, that can't be owned, but you haven't named anything. Now, Kinsella has with Bitcoin, um, and you know, obviously, I can, I can prove that you, Bitcoins are owned, of course, because they can be under the exclusive control, and, uh, but you know, he thinks they, that they can't because he's a retard, basically. I mean, he's a fucking idiot. That's the bottom line. Of course you can own a Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin can't be money. That's a whole other different thing. And he's just as idiotic on that. He quoted Mises on the regression theorem and then said, well, I don't think Mises was saying money has to come from a commodity. Are you fucking for real? He said that about 50 fucking times. Yeah. I really don't think he's read anything. Okay. Well, I, I do I, – yes, I think Bitcoin violates the regression theorem. But um, – I it doesn't. It doesn't violate it. It doesn't. Well, you can't. It's not you can't based violate. on anything hard. You can't. It, but you can't violate it. It didn't originate as a commodity. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. I'm, it's semantic. You can't violate the regression theorem because it's absolute. What 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 it means is that Bitcoin is not money. Right. The regression theorem says it's, it's not money. It's better than fiat currency, but it's not. It's not gold or silver. No, it's it's not better than fiat currency. It's, more, da it's yeah. more dangerous than any fiat currency except digital fiat currency because, you know. Why is it more dangerous? Fiat currency doesn't – it doesn't have the massive inflationary effects feeding, or the warlike effects of uh, – It's feeding the, the surveillance state. It's, it's a tool of the surveillance state. It's going to end up creating 
a society so much more extreme than 1984. It's unimaginable. Digital, when they outlaw cash, you really are in for hell on earth. We'll see. Anyway, I have to go. Okay, uh, nice debate. Uh, talk later. All right. See you, man. All right.